All right, Positive Traders, welcome to our weekly webinar. It is Sunday, March 5th, 2017. Uh, like I said before I started recording, I apologize if I don't sound as energetic or normal like I usually do. Um, I have a pretty bad case of strep throat right now. I think I also have a slight fever. Not exactly sure what's going on. Um, like I was also saying before I started recording, I'm relatively healthy. I maybe get sick once a year, once every, you know, eight months or so. Nothing too crazy. But, um, you know, I know strep throat is just a, like a, a bacteria. It's nothing. It's not like actually being sick or anything, but um, I'm not feeling the greatest. So do bear with me. as. <laughs> As we go through this, um, get probably going to be a little bit shorter than normal. Going to run through these pretty quick. Um, also, just looking at the charts, you know, Friday we did have a pretty large pullback on last week's trends. So, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of on the sidelines right now, just waiting to see what happens. But I will give you guys my point of view of what I think is going to happen for the upcoming week. So, Please do excuse my voice if I sound a little wheezy, if I sound a little weak, uh, you know, just go ahead and watch the replay and you should get a pretty good idea of what's going on if, if I'm not, um, if you aren't able to hear me very well. So um, looking at the economic calendar for this week, guys, our big key event for the week is we do have non-farm payrolls on Friday. So Friday morning for the U.S. dollar, we do have non-farm payrolls. Um, we also do have, um, I believe, um, just kind of just throughout the week, we have just some sporadic economic events, just like we have the past couple weeks. So uh, we just had some Australian dollar news after the week opened. Tomorrow we have some more Australian dollar news. We have their rate statement or their cash rate and then their rate statement so they're going to decide if they're going to keep interest rates the same or uh, increase them or decrease them it is it is forecasted for them to keep interest rates the exact same throughout the rest of the week you know we've got some different economic events for a bunch of different currencies lots of high impact news so keep in mind for that we have unemployment claims on thursday for the u.s dollar and then of course friday we do have NFP non-farm payrolls, which it looks like the the unemployment rate is expected to drop. Um, average hourly earnings is supposed to go up, and the actual non-farm payrolls. Okay, the amount of new jobs that are added to payroll companies in the U.S. is actually supposed to be decreased. So we've got some some good things on the forecast and bad things on the forecast. So I'm not really interested in doing a whole lot of trading on Friday. I'm looking on making my money before Friday, but let's go ahead and just jump straight into the technical analysis guys. Um, so last week, right? So last week we saw a decline in gold as expected. We were looking for like a little bit of a sell off in gold in this area. And matter of fact, if you guys actually watched last week's, webinar um, at the beginning of the week I said it could pro possibly push up and then end up falling and it did just that you know and I'm gonna be completely honest guys right now we're about to look at the dollar index right now the dollar index looks a little bit bearish for right now um what that means is if we're looking at a bearish dollar then we're probably looking at gold moving up a little bit higher um, I am not expecting a big move in gold this week maybe Friday but I'm not expecting a big move on gold until possibly Friday once we kind of see what non -farm, what happens with non-farm payrolls. But I'm just expecting a little bit of consolidation on gold right now, a little bit of sideways action, and then possibly moving up a little bit. Um, I'm not interested in selling gold right now um, because of Friday's rejection at this previous. This is our resistance zone right here. We can see some support right here. And it made a little bit of more support bounced off of this support zone and the 50 EMA on Friday. So I'd probably expect gold to probably move up back into like the 1245, 1250 region. But again, anything can happen. Again, this uh, 
this live session, this weekly webinar is going to be pretty quick because we don't have a whole lot of direction on the dollar right now. You know, we're still waiting for um, a little bit more um, exposure, a little bit more decisions on what's happening to the dollar. But as of right now, I do think, you know, looking at it on the four hour, also the dollar index, I think that the dollar index could fall a little bit lower. I think it could come down and touch this trend line before deciding on what's it, what it wants to do, whether it wants to rally up higher or if it wants to break down lower. All right. So Euro, that means Euro USD. We're probably looking at this pair moving higher. All right. I mean, last week we did break out of this little um, trend line, if, if you will. All right, we saw it kind of drop a little bit. In the premium group, we took some sells on the euro dollar, ended up making some money. You guys can actually see our MI arrow that we had in this area. That came in after this, these two daily candles, these two bearish exhaustion daily candles. So um, we were expecting this to go lower. We caught some pips to the downside, and now we have this big, giant, bullish engulfing candle. Um, it's probably safe to say Euro USD is probably going to end up moving a little bit higher, at least throughout this session. Um, but this week could be a little bit of a whipsaw week. You know, we could see this session be bullish, next session be bearish. But I'm definitely kind of on the sidelines. But I would be more bullish than bearish on this pair, um, especially when we look at this pair on something like the one hour right now. You know, it's it's making a a little bit of a bullish flag, all right? It's not really pulling back like we want. It's not really pulling down like we want. So it's probably going to continue up higher a little bit. So look for some strength in the euro dollar. Look for some strength in gold. Look for some weakness in the dollar index. Also means look for some weakness in USC Swiss franc, all right? Look for some weakness in this pair. We've got this support trend line right here. Look for this pair to probably move a little bit lower down to this trend line before, again, just like the dollar index, deciding if it's going to be a bounce or if it wants to move lower. All right, pound dollar. Pound dollar for the week. Um, I'm really not interested in trading any pound pairs right now, but with uh, dollar strength, I would be. I'm sorry, with dollar weakness, I would be inclined to the upside on this pair. Um, so I'd be looking for some buys on this pair. Look for it to come back and test this previous resistance, which is, you know, now, pre I'm, I'm sorry, previous resistance, then acted as support, now acting as resistance again. So, I mean, we have, do have a nice, like, price action formation down here, a little bit of a tweezer bottoms, a little bit of an exhaustion candle on Friday's candle. So, um, maybe look for some buys on this pair, but I'm not too interested on pay, um, trading pound pairs right now. Pound yen still sideways, no direction on that. Um, sorry guys, if today sounds a little bit boring um, for those of you guys that are tuning in, I have some pretty bad strep throat right now, so I'm on the sidelines. I'm not, you know, at my 100% to be trading right now. So I'm, 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 I mean, but not just not my 100% to be trading, but also in taking trade calls, but just based off of price action in the markets right now, I'm not interested in taking any trades until I kind of see what's going on with the dollar right now. Um, we do have some support levels. Uh, you guys can see even on the weekly time frame. I'd probably be bullish on pound yen as well, just like I'm bullish on pound dollar. Um, we, 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 we have some support that we're sitting at, looking at this pair on the daily and on the four hour. All right, some support in this area. This green zone marks our current support. So I'm kind of waiting to see if, we get, if we're going to get a breakout of this consolidation channel. If we're going to continue moving higher or not. Great. AUD USD. Um, I think this pair could stage a little bit of a reversal this week. I think we could be moving up higher, um, possibly moving up to some retracement levels. If we go ahead and put this on here, possibly moving up to this 50% retracement level, which is some previous support. Now going to be acting as some resistance. We do have the 76 level, which is going to be a psychological resistance as well as. Um, technical resistance in this case 
all right, previous resistance up in here, previous support down here, previous resistance in this area. All right, so look for this pair to move higher, meet some levels of resistance. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Um, not quite sure what this pair is gonna do, guys. Not, not sure if it's gonna go lower, not sure if it's gonna go higher. I'm, I'm just right now on the sidelines. It is at some extreme lows, right? You don't usually want to sell at, at extreme lows once you've had a big drop. So I'm kind of waiting to see what happens, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if this pair started to stage a small reversal. USC Jappy. <laughs> Sorry guys. Sorry. Um, with USC Jappy, you know, we, we did kind of hit this little bit of a uh, resistance level in this area. Um, this kind of is a whole zone for this pair. I'd probably expect this pair to come down a little bit lower. It's probably going to come down to this 50% retracement level at least before going up higher. <laughs> Dennis, I'm not sure if that's another language. It says Schnorr Zoo. I'm not really sure what that means, but um, I would expect USD Jappy to come down a little bit lower. So overall, if you guys are coming in right now, my, my overall premise for analysis for the beginning of this week is a weaker dollar. I'm looking for a continued sell-off of the dollar. Um, just kind of looking to see what happens in the markets, but I am looking for a weaker dollar. Um, USC CAD. Uh, we did actually go ahead and break, make a pretty big bullish week last week. You can even see last week's weekly candle. Although we're going to probably see a weaker dollar throughout the week, um, at least for the, the next couple of days, we'll probably see USD CAD a rally because USC oil um, seemed to have held resistance last week. You guys can see it right here. Held the resistance area. This is on the weekly time frame. Probably going to come back and test the 5151 area, 5150 area, which is previous resistance now acting as support. Dennis, you said it's all about the indices. That's right, man. It, it is all about the indices. It's all about, for, for me at least, for the pairs that I trade and the signals that I give out to the premium group, you know, you guys can see most of these pairs over here to the right um, have to do with the U.S. dollar. So um, also just a little bit of a recap for some of you guys that aren't in the premium group that are just kind of tuning in for our free weekly webinar. Um, last week in the premium group we profited about 130 pips in the premium group and our trade copier my trade copier which is our mam account multi-account manager account um, made about four percent actually a little bit more than four percent almost four and a half percent um, this week looking to do the exact same signal is looking to hit at least 200 pips so you know if you guys are struggling through the markets you guys are looking for you know a mentor you guys are looking for a group that stays consistent um, our premium group has been going for eight months going on nine months right now you know there's obviously something that we've been doing right if we've been going for strong for for so strong this long and like the saying goes right time will either promote you or expose you right and you know we've been doing very good for the past eight months our, our average is um, very solid so I'm looking for some, especially moving into the spring and summer months, I'm looking for some more pips to be caught this week, definitely. I'll be posting trade ideas in Telegram, obviously in Slack, posting a ton of trades also. Um, but for right now, we're looking for the U.S. dollar to continue to weaken, in my opinion. I think it's going to weaken for a little bit. Um, we can just look at like the hourly candle on the dollar index. Um, it's not making a sharp retracement like you might expect after a big drop down, meaning that we're probably going to start to form a little bit of a uh, bearish flag and then probably move a little bit lower towards the 101 area. So overall, uh, at least until Friday, because you know we don't know what's going to happen on Friday, guys. Friday is non-farm payrolls. That can, be, that can go anyway. The fundamentals will move the market more than, than the technicals. So... Um, looking for the dollar to drop right now. Drew, you said, so what's my analysis on USD CAD? 
USD CAD based on the technicals, it's even with a weak dollar, this pair is probably going to move up a little bit higher. Um, but just watch for right now, you know, it's in a lot of consolidation. If it breaks this support right here, if it breaks the support right here, which I've drawn out, then we're probably going to see a drop down to this trend line. And then, you know, either we're going to see a little bit of a flag form and then a break, or we're going to see this as a, um, you know, fake out just a small retracement and then end up moving a little bit higher. So look for dollar weakness throughout the week, guys. That's, that's my opinion is dollar weakness. Look for Euro USD to move a little bit higher. Look for gold to move a little bit higher. I think those are two of the best trades. Look for pound dollar to move higher. I think that's another great trade, but just look for dollar weakness. Okay, guys, Does anybody have any questions before we wrap up today's? And I'm sorry, today's wasn't like super in detail, super in depth. Like I said, I've, I've got a pretty bad cold there's some strep throw right now so it's not that good. all right dennis you said when am i in switzerland um probably gonna be heading to switzerland in the next couple months here got switzerland australia and the uk on the board for this year all right um and yeah we can meet in zurich that, that would be fine yeah definitely of course i'm going to um Hotel Koenig right by right outside of Lucerne, Lucerne, Switzerland. So not too far from Zurich. So um, again, if you guys have liked what you've heard, visit the website in the premium group. We average about 10 signals a week. We have the free trade copier, which like I said last week, we got about four, a little bit more than 4% growth on it. And then we have our daily live sessions. So um, Monday through Thursday, I do a session just like this a little bit more in detail, but this is kind of what we do. So to basically teach you guys how to trade, how to mark up the charts. Just not, I don't just give out signals, but I, I teach you guys actually how to trade, how to trade for yourself. And if you guys are dedicated, you're persevered, you stick with it every single day and you watch our every single daily live session, then you're definitely going to learn a lot. I mean, I get an overwhelming amount of messages from premium members that, you know, just learn so much from these daily live sessions. So um, I will catch you guys a little bit later in telegram and in slack um for those of you guys that are premium members i'll definitely catch you guys on our next uh, premium daily live session tomorrow but i'll catch you guys in the next session see you guys later